Okay, so we are back in the shop once again. And I have another engine that's kind of due for maintenance. And I figure kind of like the past few projects I've done, uh, might be a good time to investigate it for some improvements also. So uh, this is a third rail T1. This was probably marketed around uh, 2000, probably showed up early 2001, just in time for MTH and Lionel to make theirs at the same time. So in my opinion, this is the best one. Um, I had the Lionel one briefly, shared the same cab number, 5511. Um, I really liked the Lionel one. Uh, the only problem was it used the incorrect tender at the time. It, it used um, one that had uh, a cutout kind of for the uh, cab overhang of the, the uh, S2 turbine. So anyway, this is back on the bench. Um, I'm going to be going through it and uh, kind of assessing uh, what it needs other than lubrication and some minor cleanup. But cosmetically, it's pretty nice. I don't have to really do anything to it. But uh, I might want to um, address the uh, chuff rate, put a better speaker into the uh, tender or set of speakers, and see if there are any other electronic enhancements I can do. Okay, one major uh, goof on this engine is that when I put the cab figures in, I used these seats that were placed on this lower platform. So neither the fireman nor the engineer are actually at the controls. But it doesn't stop the engineer here from waving to the crowds from the uh, vestibule or whatever. So that's one of the uh, things I need to correct. I don't know um, how those seats ended up there, but I'm going to try to fix that. I've never um, disassembled this engine to the point where I could figure out how the cab was, was put on here. So it'll be quite an adventure. So as you can see, the tender's in pretty good shape cosmetically. Nothing to fix here as far as my weathering job or anything else. The uh, acrylic weathering job I did on this has held up quite well over the years. So what I might do is uh, mostly internal stuff here. I'm going to take a look at uh, my board arrangement, see if I can make any um, improvements there, and uh, investigate the speaker setup. I do believe it has the original stock speaker in here and uh i did put electric railroad in this um cruise commander and i am again using a lionel three board setup and this is using the lion master t1 sounds so we'll take a listen to that as we get into it later on i can see i probably want to make some nice lenses back here so just looking at the uh underside of the tender here. I did add a third rail pickup roller at one time. It seems to be hanging tough, so I don't think I'm gonna mess with it. Um, probably reroute the uh, lead to it. And I'm doing the classic uh, two magnets on a tender wheel, which is getting me, you know, 4.32 chuffs with the uh, ratio of the uh, tender truck wheel to the uh, drivers, so. I may address that. No, I'm going to think about it as I get into this. Um, right now, I'm already looking. I know I'm going to have the, my work cut out for me. There is a single speaker grill, basically, under here. And I'm thinking I'd like to get a second one under here, depending on what I do for a speaker upgrade. And then here's the original KD upgrade. I made this probably out of brass parts at the time. It's not terrible um i'm not sure i even want to mess with that we'll see it's a pretty basic setup electric railroad cruise commander and a uh, lionel rail sounds four era three board setup lion master sounds and a very puny speaker now i can't remember what was in here before I did this. This had to have had some kind of uh, QSI sounds maybe, because it did have a speaker, but I'm not sure what this one's doing in here. I cannot remember. Maybe I'll have to try to find some old photos. Anyway, I'm going to uh, continue to think about possibly rearranging the components on here. 
All right, so it's time to do something about my wayward crew here. Just hanging out in the uh, vestibule or whatever. Let's see if I can get these guys put in their right place. So, typical of a third rail, we have two screws. Well, that one looks a little loose. Two screws into the frame just beneath the uh, cab opening. And then I'll have another screw running vertically up through the steam saddle, basically. So, let's get to it. Here's how long that saddle screw is. Wow, not too bad. Boy, I laid all the slack they gave me. Service slack. That's nice. I bought this engine off the original owner here locally, you know, and uh, you know, it's in, it's in beautiful shape. Here we have our quiet drive system again. A series of gearboxes. Pretty nice. So let's investigate that cab, see if I can figure out how it's put together. Well, I don't see any way in there. It's uh, fully soldered together. I was expecting to see at least a couple screws underneath. I, I think these, if you can see that, there's a couple of holes. Looks like where the seats are. And I think they should be up here on that platform. Interesting that the T1 had this two level cab assembly or whatever. So I gotta figure out how to move those seats in there. So whenever I revisit these old projects, I just like to reacquaint myself with the uh, workings. And I really, really appreciate the art that goes into building these models. Br brass and die cast, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of die cast too. There's a lot of very well done die cast engines. I have a few sold off quite a bit in the past, but um, if done right, everything looks great. But this is pretty typical for the time. There's that uh, lighting regulator board, just runs off a of track power. Probably provides six volts to these grain of wheat lamps. And you can see at one time I disconnected the uh, class lights, which I like to do. Decent size boiler weight in here. It's just neat the way this stuff is made. So I have to admit, I'm not even that crazy about cab interiors, but you got to really appreciate the work they put into this one. That's really nice. Um, there's a, you can see the edge of that seat's right against the back wall. You can see this one still has the, the glue sitting on it. I wonder if I could crack those out and just move them forward up there on that, on that ledge. That's just really nice in there. So here's the T1 crew sitting where they belong now. And for some reason, I did not record the process I went through from making seats for them. Um, but they are secure in the cab now and, and they are at the controls. So now we can move on to some other adventures. Here I am playing around with uh, a DB measurement app on my uh, iPhone and this is the original speaker that well that was in this tender as you can see it's not very loud um, I found this one on eBay I got a set of these for like eight bucks these must be out of like a TV or something but they're like a two watt speaker and I bought them just based on on the uh, dimensions and the size of that magnet and I gotta say they're pretty loud um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this one here, and uh, you can see I'm just playing around with different ways of uh, baffling it right now, and I'm getting different um, loudness readouts. See, this series of experiments kinda encouraged me to actually go ahead and eventually install it, but right now I'm just playing around with different arrangements, and uh, this was the pretty much 
um, deciding factor in using it. Um, this is just a Lionel speaker enclosure, but I figured if I could replicate this with a 3D print, this is probably the way to set it up. So I came up with this 3D printed speaker box here, and this was the first version. And um, it gave me similar results to the Lionel one, but it was more custom fitted to the speaker. So this is pretty much what I went with. And then here you can see I just set it up on these one, two, three blocks just to raise it up off the ground um, in a similar position to where it would be if it was sitting in the tender shell. So uh, I found this very promising. So this is what I moved on with. So I'm gonna put the tender off to the side for the time being. Um, I got the speaker enclosure made and my next thing to figure out is how I want to open up the uh, tender frame for uh, unfettered air movement from the speaker because I think it sounds good and I'd like to open this up. So I'm gonna get back to that in a bit. But right now we're gonna go look at what I did on the locomotive. Okay, so let's review the engine progress so far. Because I wanted a proper synced four chuff based off one of the driver um, sets here, I needed a better uh, tether and socket setup. So I'm using one of these MTH 10 pin tethers. And this is a part I picked up at York. And I needed to make these um, kind of adapter standoffs for it. It's actually mounted upside down in here. And uh, I 3D printed a couple of adapters for it. So that allows me to get the chuff signal out to the electric railroad boards. And I decided to uh, rewire the uh, locomotive lighting a little bit. Since I have more tether positions, I can now um, control the lighting with TMCC. So it, it's going to be real simple. It's just going to be headlight on off. Um, so this will provide power to the uh, headlight controlled by the um, electric railroad board and then there's just a uh, constant power to the cab light. So here we'll take a closer look. I 3D printed this reed switch retainer plate here. I have this kind of a hollow block here that the uh, reed switch slides into and I can adjust its position kind of laterally to help pick up these magnets. So you can see the one side is connected to ground here on this ground lug, and this, this guy is sneaking up through the frame. Um, depending on what boards you use, if you run the chuff directly to the Electric Railroad Cruise Commander, it's a grounded input. Uh, I have to be careful if you're using some of their standalone sound boards, like their Rail Sounds Commander or Sound Commander or whatever they call it. Um, it's kind of a floated input, so you'd have to run both of these wires back to it. So this wouldn't work for everything, but, and I kind of went through everything. Uh, everything's in good shape here. So very minor lubing and stuff like that. This is something nice about third rail stuff. You can see how limited the quantities are on these. This particular uh, number 5511, I guess there was only 115 total of them made. Pretty neat. Getting back to the uh, shrouded socket for the tether, I had to get a little creative on the wiring because I had some short leads um, from the existing wiring. You can see uh, here's the leads coming from the pickup rollers. And they did kind of a nice job routing them through the springs here. So I kind of copied it with my chuff line coming back. And there's actually holes in the uh, motor mount here to route cables through. That was pretty neat. So I have power and ground, motor, chuff, and headlight. So I'm only really using six of the 10 positions on this. It's a bit overkill, but this is kind of a, a standard MTH part. And um, luckily this actually fit in the uh, hole in the back of the cab on the T1. That's why I decided to try replacing it. So I didn't have to have like a second, you know, auxiliary plug for my chuff line going back to the tender. So this was the old four wire plug, which I, I tend to retain a lot for simplicity on a lot of my other engines. So it wasn't too awful bad to replace once I came up with these little standoffs. I also like to do an auxiliary ground lug when I can. So 
So we're almost ready to put it back together. So right now I'm milling and uh, filling on my uh, T1 tender frame here. So I got these brass screws. I think they're, oh, what are these? 1032 or something? And I'm just kind of screwing them into these old speaker holes and then uh, grinding them off and soldering them in. So um, that's how I'm going to fill these. I might fill this hole. This looks kind of nasty. And I'm also going and filling some of the other smaller holes. Um, I, I sometimes will screw in a uh, brass screw and cut it off and solder it and then uh, sand it and fill it. So I'm just trying to make this look nice. So I wanted some big uh, speaker cutouts. And uh, this is my first uh, real project on the Sure line. And it's all right. A little rough. I had a hard time keeping this clamped. But uh, I got to go back in and probably should have filled these first. I got to go back and mill this out a little more. But I'm almost done. So here is my first experiment with the uh, Sureline 5400. I just wanted these maximized speaker holes. Let's see, I have the uh, truck boss kind of bridged here. Um, leaves a lot to be desired. This is like my first go around with the uh, Sureline. And the biggest problem I had was that this is like almost the full width of the bed. So I had to get real creative with the uh, clamping on it. And you can see my brass fills. So once this is painted up, this should look pretty cool. But here's my 3D printed speaker housing. And uh, when it mounts on here, it's gonna look kind of cool. Um, very maximized speaker hole so I should be able to push a lot of air through there um, so hopefully I get to keep some of those DBs I was pumping out there we'll see so here's my fully manual 5400 a lot of fun to play with never had a mill before so all right so I'm in the process of redoing my speaker enclosure here so i'm back in tinkercad okay here's a more advanced shape i think i probably could have done a better job setting this sidewall in here but uh basically to get this symmetrical i cut it in half and then copied the one side inverted it so now let's see if i can stick it together now ah it should be good I don't know what that seam is. Anyway, it's a very odd shaped uh, top hat now, I guess. So let's get this to the printer and see what it comes out looking like. Okay, here's my new and improved speaker housing. I just gotta take off all the supports. So it should just slip right over the speaker here, but I gotta probably trim these solder terminals and make a hole for the leads to come out so let's see if i was close i lost a little volume here um it still sounds good though it'll look cooler i think more advanced shape <laughs>
crap, that's loud. <laughs> wow. Holy moly, that was so loud. <laughs> it's like these um, eBay speakers I found. I think I'm going to order another set. All right, so the Mighty T1 is going to go back together. I've got headlights and the cab light assembly here. So uh, these will get reinstalled in the engine. Controllable by TMCC via the Electric Railroad Cruise Commander. This will be pretty nice. Didn't have it before. So, you know, I had to undo that nice voltage regulator third rail puts in. But since I was installing a 10-pin uh, tether, I might as well take advantage of it. Um, so I've got some nice 4 truss per rev based on crank pin position, which is like my favorite thing. And cleaned up the uh, tender electronics arrangement. Got a nice powerful speaker now, can absorb two watts, dissipate whatever. I think the uh, driver on this board here, that little boomer chip is about 1.5 watts nominal. So I, I don't know, I'm not like a super audio expert, but I do have the tech sheet on it. There's different ways of measuring the, uh, the power. Anyway, it sounds amazing. My experimental 3D printed speaker infinite baffle box here seems to work pretty well. And I didn't like the way the first one came out. It didn't fit quite right. Even though I think I went through two prints on that, I decided to do this super advanced high speed looking uh, kind of oval enclosure. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty pleased with uh, with this little improvement project. I kind of like this burnished brass look I did here. I didn't really, you know, I was just cleaning this up. So I got to use my Sherline a little bit. Um, I'll get better at using that. Uh, the biggest challenge with using it um, was the fact that this tender is actually kind of large for the Sherline. Um, this was almost as wide or if not a little wider than the actual bed on there. So I'll have to, in the future, come up with some better clamping uh, techniques. So we're ready to put it back together. I'll, I'll get the tender sh shell put on, um, get the engine put back together, take it for a test run. Kind of think this engine's a little overdue for um, like another epic run video too, you know? It's got way better sounds. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did put the Lion Master T1 sounds in here. Uh, I did that a few years ago. I think this was, uh, I, I did it on this engine quite a while back. I really like these sounds, especially when you can pump out the full potential of of the audio driver on this board. So anyway, hope you guys like this project and uh, we'll put it back together, give it a little run.
All right, so there she is, the tuned up T1. It's done for now. Yeah, there's some other things I wouldn't mind doing to it someday, like maybe a uh, shorter, shorter draw bar, maybe some, uh, maybe a nice uh, deck plate effect in there someday. But right now I got much better sound out of it. I got the uh, Lion Master T1 sounds in there, which I like quite a bit. Got a nice two watt speaker and uh, got a milled out frame to uh, push the maximum amount of air out from that speaker. So I think it sounds pretty good. Might be time to film this again. As you can see, it has really no problem pulling these heavy brass head end cars I got a while back, these third rail cars. So yeah, pretty fun project. Another little uh, self-improvement project, learned a lot again. And uh, I think it's ready to uh, get back into revenue service.